Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss back again with another video and today we're going to do the real review of the Google Pixel XL. Now before we get started, let me answer two of the main questions that everybody been asking me all week. Number one, if you got a Galaxy Fireball and you got to trade it in, should you get the Pixel XL or should you get something else? And my advice would be get something else because chances are if you love the Galaxy Note 7, then you like to have that big screen display, you like the always on display, you like to have an expandable memory, you like all of the motions and gestures and gimmicky features, you like the iris sensor, you like to have an S Pen, you like all of that fancy stuff, well you're not gonna get that with the Pixel XL. Going from the Note 7 to the Pixel XL is the same as going from a Ferrari to a Prius. One is mad fun and one is mad boring. Now there's only one real upgrade from the Note 7 to the Pixel XL, and that's the processor. All right, with the Note 7, you got the Snapdragon 820, and with the Pixel XL, you got the Snapdragon 821. Other than that, the cameras, they neck and neck, so you really only take an L with the processor. Now I would suggest, if you like to have the Note 7 and you really gotta trade it in, get yourself an LG V20. All right, this is a big screen display, has a whole bunch of features and gimmicky options, you're gonna like this one. Or you could play it safe, get a Galaxy S7 Edge. It's pretty much the Note 7 without the S Pen. And they did upgrade the uh, always on display. So you're gonna like that. Try something different if you want. Get an iPhone 7 Plus. I right, live on the wild side. Or if you wanna play it safe, get yourself an HCC 10 or an LG G5. Can't go wrong with either of these. Both of them got the same processor, beautiful display, great cameras. Next. If you got a Nexus 6P, should you upgrade and get the Pixel XL? Now, my answer to that question would be hell yeah. Not just yeah, hell yeah. Now, when you upgrade from the 6P to the Pixel XL, you only take an L with one thing, and that's the dual speakers on the front. Other than that, everything is upgraded. All right, now, you upgrade them with processors, two processors. All right, this is Snapdragon 810, so you went from Snapdragon 810 you skip the 20 and went to the 21. Now, if you look on paper, both of these got 12 megapixel cameras, but the cameras are night and day. All right, the camera and the 6P can't even come close to the Pixel XL's camera. So I would say definitely upgrade if you're into having stock Android phones. This is the best stock Android phone on the planet right now. Now, just like every other thing that I review, there's always gonna be some things that I don't like. Y'all know they call me Petty Roosevelt, I'm about to get petty. But after that, I'll get into everything that I do like. Number one, the price. Now y'all heard me say this before, the price is too damn high. All right, 850 bucks for this, that's not a go. Especially if you think about it. Now I just bought this LG V20 today. After taxes and everything, it was cheaper than the Pixel. This was about 815. So this was 850, 815. This has a removable battery, IR blaster, expandable memory, bigger display, pro mode on the camera. This has all of the features that you want on a smartphone. The Pixel doesn't. Now, shout out to Google. They did a slick move. They came out with a 32 gig version and jumped right to 128. Now that was weak. All right, now I gotta call it like I see it. That was weak. That was a weak move from Google. They got greedy on that one. They should have came out with a 64 gig version. I would have preferred to have gotten that one. Now I don't need 128 gigs, but having 32 gigs, that's pushing it kind of close, especially if you take a lot of 4K video, even though you do get unlimited storage, but you're gonna have to swap that out and that takes time. And if you like downloading a bunch of apps, you're gonna have to keep watching your storage. So I don't really like that slick move. I don't like the price. Now, if you think about it, 850 bucks, Look what you could get for half the price. You could get an Asus Zenfone 3. You get a Blue Pure XR. You get a OnePlus 3. You get a Hawaii 8. Or you could get pound for pound the best $400 phone on the planet, the Axon 7. Dual speakers, hi-fi deck. This is a win right here. And that's half the price. And arguably, all of these phones in my hand right now do more than the Pixel XL. So I'm definitely not feeling the price. I understand that you gotta pay to play. I'm not gonna complain, but I don't mean I gotta like it. Now I did pick this up with a bundle deal. We'll talk about that in a minute. Next, 
no removable battery. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say all of those phones you just showed, they don't have a removable battery, but some phones do. LG V20, LG V10, LG G5. You still have options on the market for cheaper. All right, so I don't like the fact that it doesn't have a removable battery. Next, no IR blaster. Again, a lot of people are going to say a lot of phones don't have that, but a lot of phones do. Hawaii 8, IR blaster. LG G5, IR blaster. V10, IR blaster. V20, IR blaster. Now, if you never had an IR blaster, then you're probably saying, who cares about that? But people that did have IR blasters, you know, you know about quick remote. You know how dope that is to come in your house or go in the doctor's office or go in the diner and just pull out your phone and start changing the channels or if the TV's on some bullshit, hit power and turn the TV off. That is a major win. Look how much space it takes up on the top. Not much at all. Every phone should have that. Next, no wireless charge. Again, not the biggest deal to some people, but if you like me and you got a whole bunch of wireless chargers and desktop docks that have wireless chargers or the car mounts that have wireless chargers, y'all see me review all that stuff. You need that. You need that. Now, granted, the Galaxy Fireball costs a little bit more, but wireless charge, that's a big deal for me. I don't like the fact that it's not on the Pixel. Now, keep in mind, Google built this phone from the ground up. So they had all of this time to look at every phone that's out. They could have took everything that they like from the HTC 10, take the little features off that, take everything you like from the Note 7, take everything you like from the LG V10. They could have took all of that stuff and came out with a perfect phone and they could have charged 500 bucks and they would have cornered the market. But they got greedy. Next, the phone is not waterproof. Now look, even the iPhone is waterproof. Now, in this day and age, in this day and age, if the iPhone is waterproof, then every phone on the market should be waterproof. The iPhone, this is kind of like if you go to your grandfather's house and he got a VHS player. And every time you go there, he got a VHS player. And then you show up one day and he got an Android TV box and you don't have one. Then you're going to feel like a dinosaur. And it's the same way. All of these phones now coming out waterproof, even Apple. And you mean to tell me they didn't make a water resistant coating on the Pixel XL? I don't like that. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say it's splash proof and dust proof and all that. That's what it says on the website. And you probably could even submerge it and it might work, but they're not advertising it as a waterproof phone. And if it gets water damage, you ain't gonna be able to take it in the store and say, well, I watched a YouTube video and somebody submerged it. They're gonna say, look, we told you it's not water resistant. So I don't like that. Next, no expandable memory. Again, you're building a phone from the ground up. I understand that, you know, you might want to, you know, sell your storage cloud space and all that. That's cool. I understand that. But come on. Galaxy Note 7, LG V20, all of these phones with expandable memory, even some of these $400 phones, a lot of these $400 phones. You mean to tell me for $850, bucks, you all couldn't let me have expandable memory? I don't like that. That's not a win. Next no dual speakers now granted the speaker on the bottom is loud it's pretty good but you know I, and look and i know people was complaining when i said it's only one speaker oh that's a mic but you got two speaker grills okay fine why not just put dual speakers on the bottom or do the same thing that apple did the same thing that motorola did the same thing that htc did put a speaker on the bottom and put one in the top how hard would that have been now htc this phone only been out for five months but you see how it's a huge success, so huge that Apple went out and did the same thing. Why not do the same thing? Why not? One speak on the bottom, I'm not really feeling that. Next, the battery. Now, we'll talk about the battery. I do like the fact that it has quick charge, but the battery, I'm not even getting a solid four hours of heavy use. Now, I could get more than that. There's a whole bunch of battery saving tips and tricks. Granted, I do have the screen on max brightness most of the time because I'm using the phone outdoors most of the time, but you can't even get a full four hours on one charge. Now, if you go to the website, it says 15 minute charge, give you seven hours worth of battery life. That's bullshit. You can't even get seven hours battery life with a full charge from zero to 100. So how are you going to get seven hours with a 15 minute charge? False advertising. 
Now you might get seven hours of standby time. Maybe I gotta go back into the website and read. Maybe they got a little asterisk on the bottom and it says seven hours of standby time, but you're not getting seven hours of real world usage charge uh, time with a seven with a 15 minute charge. It's not happening. So the battery on this is not a go. And the fact that you can't remove it and just swap a new battery in, that's a double whammy right there. Next. Now, no motions. Now, you do have one motion in the camera. We'll talk about that in a minute. But drop test. No motion. So when you pick up the phone, you can't double tap to awake the screen. You don't have the ambient sensor where you can just wave your hand over and see your messages or see the time. You don't have nothing. All right, now, Galaxy Note 7. Always on display is always on. All right now, it's, it's kind of dull, but you see it's always on. Now I'm the type of guy, when I'm doing my paperwork and I'm doing my spreadsheets and all that, I got the phone on the table like this or on a dock. Most of the time, just on the table like this. I gotta constantly reach over and press the power button to look and see my latest messages. I don't like that. Now y'all seen the Moto Z and a, a lot of other phones. You just wave your hand over, activate the screen. No motions, no fancy gestures. I understand it's stock Android, but 850 bucks, no. All right, no, just no. <laughs> Next. Now this has to do with the build. I, I, I tried, I really tried to let this glass and metal build grow on me. I even said to myself, you know what? It's kinda, it kinda makes the phone stand out. So when I whip this out outside with no case, Everybody knows I'm gonna have the Pixel because it's pretty much the only phone that has the glass and the metal. But I'm sorry, I just don't like it. I tried to like it, I just don't like it. It looks ugly. Now it kind of looks like an iPhone. Okay, that's cool, but I don't like it. And that's the thing. You went with glass on the back. Why not go glass all the way and drop wireless charging here? Or just go metal all the way and get rid of these fingerprints. You know, I, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. So I don't like that. Now there's an easy fix for that. Grab a case. Now this is my favorite Pixel XL case and slap it on. Once you slap this case on, what's the difference between this and the iPhone? No difference. So you're gonna rock a case on this and you get rid of that ugly back. But now we take it to the front. Take it to the front. The front, this is kind of ugly too. Now I'm rocking the black wallpaper so it's a little bit, you know, you can't really see it as much. But look how much bezel is on the bottom. Look at that big open space. So they could have easily dropped another speaker right there. Nexus 6P style, they could have had two speakers on it. Now, look, another thing I hate is the fingerprint sensor on the back. Now, I can live with that, with the Nexus 6P, I could live with it because I said to myself, all right, you got dual speakers, put the fingerprint sensor on the back, I have to, get, I have to deal with it. But you mean to tell me you put the fingerprint sensor on the back and then you just got the bottom wide open, nothing. They could have just extended the screen. This could have easily been a 5.7 inch display. So the front bezels, ugly, not feeling it. And a waste of space. Next, I know this is a laundry list. <laughs> I'm a laundry list, but I'm being mad petty, but some of this ain't really petty. Next, when you take it to the camera, there's no pro mode. Now, stock Android phones, they really never had pro modes. That's cool. But 850 bucks, no. Uh, you should have a pro mode, especially when you pull out an Hawaii, a Hawaii 8 $400 phone that has pro mode. All right, so now look, now me personally, I like to do point and shoot, but still, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So I'd rather have that pro mode on deck so one of these days if I'm sitting around bored, then I can start you know, fumbling around with the, the uh, autofocus and the white balance. I could just start playing with all that stuff. I already paid 850 bucks. I should have that option. You don't have no pro mode. And another thing about the camera, no optical image stabilization. Now you do have some image stabilization software and it does work, it does work. But look, I take a lot of videos and pictures in the gym after curling nobs, you know, 70 pound dumbbells and you got that shaky hand. You're gonna notice, you're gonna notice that with this camera. Now I did the same video with my iPhone and with the Pixel XL and you can notice the difference with the shakiness. And you'll also notice the difference if you're moving around a lot. If you're moving around a lot and you're taking a video, the video will shake. So they skimped out with the optical image stabilization, not really feeling that at all. And the last thing I don't like has to do with the stock launcher. Now I do like the Pixel launcher. Yes, you know, it's exclusive to the Pixel phone, that's cool. But the one thing about it is you can't customize it. 
Now, y'all see all of my Android phones, they all look the same. I got my beautiful widgets clock right here. Let's pull up one so I can show y'all what I'm talking about. Let's pull up the home screen real quick. Got my stock clock. Now, I've been using the same stock clock for the last six years. Can't use it on the Pixel XL because the little Google search bar right here, you can't move. Now, it would have been nice if you could move that to the bottom. Why is it only in one part? You press it, okay, fine. You got your Google Now launcher. You swipe over, that's cool. But you can't customize it and you can't move this little time, uh, the little date and weather widget. You can't move it. Now, you can set up your own your own different home pages. You could download a different launcher, but for 850 bucks, that should be a stock feature that you could just easily slide this to the bottom. Might even be better from the bottom because closer to your thumb. So not really feeling that at all. Now I know what y'all saying. He just went for 20 minutes talking about everything he don't like. He probably don't really like this phone. On the contrary, this is my third favorite phone right now. Only behind the Galaxy Fireball 7 iPhone 7 Plus then it's the Pixel XL now let me talk about everything that I do like and let me just say this first the Pixel XL this is the best running version of Android that's out right now now y'all remember I said the same thing with the uh, Moto Z droid this is the phone right here if you got one of those Apple fanboys, now we all got one of those at our job, you know, Daquan from the mailroom that just got his iPhone 7 and he can't wait to see you with your Android phone so he can get into a little phone war and tell you how wack your Android phone is, how much it be lagging and stuttering and you know, all the, all the bugs in it. And you wanna shut him down? This is the shutdown phone, all right? If you know anybody that has an iPhone and you wanna shut them down and show them how Android is supposed to run, not from Galaxy S5, S6 days when you still had lag here and there, this is the real version of Android. This is the smoothest and fastest version of Android out right now. Now, I'll put this phone up against the iPhone any day. Now, I'm not talking about benchmark text, uh, benchmark tests and all the, the geekmark.coms and all that bullshit. I'm talking about real life, day-to-day -day usage. The Pixel is the smoothest, fastest Android phone out. Look how fast that app drawer opens. One swipe and I can swipe all the way to the bottom. No hiccups, no lag, notification tray, no lag with that. Swipe down. Now, I'm doing this from behind the camera, but you see, you got to swipe from the top. Notification. Look how fast that is. Now, when I first got this phone, I didn't really like that launcher from the bottom because I thought you had to swipe from the middle. Then I figured out that you could swipe from anywhere on the bottom to open up the launch tray. Now, I love it. The app drawer on the bottom, open from anywhere. Absolutely love it. Now, I was saying to myself, okay, this has that brand new phone zippiness to it which all phones have, and then maybe a couple of days later, after you download your 200 apps, after you got 100 apps open at the same time, then the phone starts to break in a little bit and you get to see how the phone is really gonna run. This phone is still running just as fast and smooth as it was when I took it out of the box and had no apps on it. This is a major go. This is the best version of Android that's out right now. Now, let's talk about everything that I do like. Number one, the bundle deal. Now, when I bought this phone for 850 bucks, it did hurt. But Google was nice enough to give me a little bit of lubrication and they threw in the Google Daydream for free. Now, I went and checked the price on that. They're selling that for 80 bucks. So minus that from the 850, that's a little bit of savings right there. I ain't mad at that. But the second part of the bundle is you get unlimited high res photos and video storage on the Google Cloud for free. Now that's a win. That means 4K videos, unlimited. High res images, unlimited. So you could take pictures and videos all day long for the next couple of years and save them right in the cloud. So that's a win right there. Now a lot of people think you already get that, but you don't. You don't get high res image, unlimited photos. You don't get that right now. So if you buy the Pixel, now I don't know if they still running that deal, but you get the virtual reality headset. I was probably gonna get that anyway and the unlimited storage with the photos and videos, high res images, that's a win. Next, build quality. Now, although I don't like the ugly glass, you know, glass and metal build on the back, I can't say that the phone has a bad build. Now, y'all know I gotta say it one time, feels good in the hands, ladies, hit me up. Definitely feels premium, doesn't feel cheap at all. 
All right, it's quality materials. So I'm feeling the build, can't really hate on that. Next, let's talk about the fingerprint sensor real quick. Now the fingerprint sensor does work 100% of the time. Nice and fast, super smooth. Now, is it the best fingerprint sensor on the market? I would say no. I would still go with Huawei's fingerprint sensors. They make the best ones. Then after that, you could compare this and Apple, they right neck and neck, but this one works 100% of the time. You're not gonna have any problems with the fingerprint sensor. Next, the display. Now this is a beautiful display, Quad HD. All right, so you already know, AMOLED displays. The blacks look nice and dark. Uh, you get that vivid color. This is, this is just beautiful. If you're taking pictures or you're watching videos, you're gonna love this display. I just quad HD. I'm definitely feeling that. Y'all know how I feel about AMOLED displays anyway. I'll take them over these IPS displays. Let me show you something real quick. You see now, you take something like on the V20. Now, I'll do a comparison, but it's night and day. It's night and day. Both of these are quad HD, same resolution, but the AMOLED panels, they just look better. So this display is beautiful. It's a little bit smaller than the Note 7, so you get more PPIs. Now, I don't know if you can see that with the naked eye or not, but I can see it. I can see it with my naked eye. Next, speaking of display, now you do have 3D touch. All right, you gotta put those in parentheses, 3D touch. It's not the full Apple 3D touch, but it's very similar. It works with a lot of the Google apps. All right, not the Google Plus, let's see. It works with Chrome, right? Works with Gmail. All you do is long press down, and you get your 3D touch. Now, one of the things that's hot about it is say, say you long press down on the camera. You have two choices, take a video or take a selfie. I could take, maybe I wanna take selfies all the time. I can open that up into a separate app. That's a little separate shortcut on the home screen and have selfie on deck. All right, and you could do that with any of the apps that support the 3D touch or long press touch, whatever you wanna call it. So I like that feature. Now, it doesn't work on every app, but it works on a lot of them. All right, mostly the Google ones. I'm surprised they don't have it on the, Google, uh, on the Google Talk yet. They don't have it on YouTube Music yet. They have it on YouTube. All right, so I can put a YouTube search. That's a nice one to have on deck. Just have that right there. All right, so that's a nice little feature right there. Next, let's talk about the speaker real quick. Let me pull up some music. Let y'all hear how the speaker sounds. All right, it's a little purchase of tracks. Now, let's make sure this is max, it's max volume. Now the speaker's coming from only one side, see? But the speaker is loud. Speaker's loud. I can't really complain about it. I just wish they would have had dual speakers. That would have made this phone pop even more. But it's good enough. Now, is it better than these $400 phone speakers? The answer is yes. And when you get in your text messages and you get in your phone calls and you got different alerts set up, this is gonna be nice and loud. And it definitely sounds loud with the alarm. I've been using this to wake me up out of my cat naps, my siestas, <laughs> if you wanna call it. And it wakes me up fine. So the speaker's nice and loud. Next. The battery. Now, like I said, less than four hours on heavy use. Let's let's check my brightness. Okay, right now I got it on probably about half, but usually during the day I have it like this, about 80%. Now I go heavy. YouTube videos, streaming music from Amazon at the same time. Got my Bluetooth headphones connected. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram all open at the same time. Going crazy. Don't get four hours. That's cool, I don't like that but the best part about this battery is the quick charge. So this is one of those shit shower and shave phones. All you gotta do when you get home. Now, if you get home and your battery's on, let's say 20%, been rocking out all day. Plug this in, use your quick charge 3.0, plug this in. Go take a shit, go take a shower, go shave, whatever order you do. Go make yourself that peanut butter and jelly sandwich with a cup of Raymond noodles, get dressed, by the time you're walking out the door, your phone is gonna be 80 to 90% charge. All right, so that is a major win. The quick charge on this phone is ridiculous. I would put this in the top three fast charging phones. All right, so I like that part. Next, let's talk about the camera real quick. Now the camera on this phone, 
Look, I've been arguing with people online all day, all night. Now, look, you can you can take anybody's word you want. I'm going to say right now that this is my favorite camera. Now, between this and the Galaxy Note 7, I'm still going to pick this one over the Galaxy Note 7. And the reason is, all right, now the reason, point and shoot. Now, the Galaxy Note 7 does have Pro Mode. So now if you know how to use Pro Mode, you could probably tweak it a little bit better. But if you got this phone in your pocket and you pull it out and you pull out your Note 7, just point and shoot status, and you're taking a picture, not... This, not this, this ain't the notes, but you get the idea. You pull out both phones and you take a picture. I did this the other night in Times Square. When you take that picture, it's gonna look better on the pixel. Now go to my Instagram and look at that picture of Times Square that I took. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Look at the picture of Times Square. So it's right on my Instagram, it's, it's not too far in. I wanna show you something real quick though. Now these are the two pictures I want you to look at if you go to my Instagram. This is the most recent one of Times Square. It looks amazing. This is point and shoot right out of my pocket with the Pixel XL. Now, if you scroll, keep scrolling down my Instagram, you're going to find this one from Times Square with the Note 7. Now, both of these pictures came out amazing. But here's the thing. With the Note 7, you notice how the black looks extra dark. It kind of looks cartoony a little bit. And this one looks more realistic. So the camera on this, in my opinion, this is the best camera out. Now, just for point and shoot status, pull out your pocket point and shoot now you don't have too many options there's no pro mode you do have your timer you got your hdr plus which processes the pictures pretty fast you got your grid four by four you know switch that up you got your different uh settings right here for cloud sunny days fluorescent play with that if you want you could change the brightness right on the fly and you do got a few different modes you got slow motion you need that you got panoramic Photosphere, lens blur, and settings. Now, lens blur, that's just like if you want to take a picture, say I had this phone here and had some stuff in the background, I can snap the picture and blur out the background. Now, let me show you Photosphere real quick because Photosphere is definitely dope. Now, I just took this Photosphere a few minutes ago while I was in the store. I want to show y'all what it looks like. All right, so when you're taking a Photosphere, and one of the best things about this camera, they make it easy to do. Remember how panoramic used to be? You have to hold your phone all steady and it's kind of hard to get a good shot. Kind of makes you not want to use it. When you use Photosphere, it's just going to be a ball on the screen. Just follow the ball. It's simple. Now check out this Photosphere I took in the candy store. Now, this is perfect. You could send this photo just like this and you get a full 360 of the candy store. This is my favorite option on this phone. This is so dope. All right, so you're going to have a lot of fun with Photosphere. Let's see anything else. You got video, 4K. And you can also zoom while you're shooting the video. And you can also take little screenshots. All right, so not bad. Now, there's one motion with this. When you're in the camera, you shake the phone, and that'll take it to your front-facing camera. So this phone really only has three motions. All right, that one, you got your World Star Hip Hop button. All right, you press the power button twice. Now to activate your camera, and you got your flip to mute. So not really too many features. Let me just make sure that was the, the third one. Let's see. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Let's go to gestures. Yeah. Oh, matter of fact, one more. Not flip to mute. You don't even have flip to mute on this. What a shame. <laughs> you got scroll down for your notifications. So you take your fingerprint sensor, you scroll down, and that'll activate your notification bar. All you got to do is scroll down. That's cool if you got small hands and you can't reach the top of your phone. It is what it is. What else? Next, let's talk about the processor. Now, you got the Snapdragon 821. That's the newest one on the market. And it's, it works like a beast on this phone. A complete beast. This phone has zero lag. Processes everything fast. The RAM management is great. Let's, let's check something real quick. Let's go to Instagram. All right, well, just reload it. But usually, it'll save your page for a minute. You see how many apps I got running at the same time? Nice and smooth. Now with Android, Nugget. Shout out to Nugget. You can clear all your items at the same time. That's a new feature right there. Another new feature with Nugget is you got restart. Now it seems simple, but you remember with your Nexus 6P in order to restart, you had to go through a whole, whole, you know, the whole motion. Now you got the restart button. That's a nice little touch. Process on this Snapdragon 821, what is there to say, but it's the best. All right, this is the best process out right now. Silky smooth. Opens and close your apps extra fast. The Google Now launcher works super fast. 
No more of that silly animation. That that kind of caused me to not use it. Now let me show you. Where's my where's my fireball at? Let me grab the fireball seven. All right, if you grab the fireball seven, when you use the when you use the Google now, you see how it has to do that long animation. Now when you hit your Google well Google Assistant, pops right up. So I'm feeling that process is a win. Now a lot of people ask me about the DAC. You can't compare this DAC with the HTC or with the LG V10 or the V20. It's not going to compete. But it doesn't sound like trash, and it actually sounds better than the iPhones. So what that means is when you plug your headphones in and you're just listening, if you got the same, if you got one set of quality headphones and you plug them into the Pixel XL and then you plug them into your iPhone and play the same music from the same music player, it's going to sound better on the Pixel. Now, Apple, they don't have, they, they never had a hi-fi deck on none of the iPhones, and they still don't. So this one, it's not V20 quality, it's not V10, but it's decent. All right, it's pretty good. Next, let's talk about Google Assistant. Now, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. Google Assistant is not that much better than a regular Google now. It's really not that much better, but it is an upgrade. One of the best parts about Google Assistant is how you could just keep talking, but you can still do that. You can do that with Google now, but it's more conversational. So you could, you know, tell me a joke and all that silliness. Like, we'll try it. Matter of fact, hold up. We'll do it at the same time so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, first, I'll do a simple test. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll do it at the same time. Who is Denzel Washington? According to Wikipedia, According to Wikipedia Denzel, Denzel, Denzel Washington, Washington, Jr. Washington is an American, is an American actor, filmmaker, actor, filmmaker, filmmaker and director, director, and producer. Now, part of the hype about the Google Now or Google Assistant is now you can just keep talking, but you can still do the same thing on Google Now. What movies was he in? Denzel Washington's His movies, movies include, include The Magnificent, Magnificent Seven, Seven, Training Day, Day and, and 52 others. others. How old is he? 61, 61 years old. old. Has he ever won any awards? Don't think so, but I'm not sure. See, now, now, now here's where it differs. Here's where it differs. Tell me a joke. Here you go. What did the vinaigrette say to the refrigerator? See, Close the door. I'm dressing. Okay. <laughs> See, so basically it's pretty much similar, but it does have a little bit more conversation. So now you could ask the silly stuff like, who's better, you or Siri? It's hard to compare. We're like apples and oranges because Siri works for Apple and I like oranges. So you got, you know, it's a, it's a little bit more fun. Now, I haven't really been playing with it too much. I just use it for my day-to-day -day stuff, like setting alarms, setting calendar reminders, and checking flights. So when, like, my homeboy's coming in, I can just say something like, American Airlines Flight 21. American Airlines 21 from New York City to Los Angeles has landed. And then you can say something like, what's the best way to get to JFK? Now, sometimes it, see, it, it does Airport. work. Here you go. Now you have to see it'll take you right to your right to your maps, and then you can just pick the terminal and ride out. So that's a go. So Google now the, the Google Assistant, it's a go. It's not the best in the world yet. I still wouldn't say that it's better than Siri. It's equal to Siri. Now it's not blowing Siri away. Siri is definitely more conversational. But this, um, that extra feature where you could just keep talking, you can't do that on Siri. So I guess it is better than Siri in some ways. Next, let's talk about the lag factor. We just mentioned that on a scale of 1 to 10. 10 being the most lag in the world, 1 being the Pixel XL. This is a 1. Right, this is no lag at all. Now, I've been trying to get this phone to lag. Y'all know how I do. I have everything open at the same time, running stuff in the background. I've been trying to get this thing to lag, and I can't do it. So that is a major win in my book. Zero lag. Next, accessories. Now, here's the thing. Y'all know I like all the different accessories and all that, and you might like that too, because keep in mind, you're buying this phone 850 bucks. You might be keeping this for two years. So how many cases and different kind of accessories you got? Well, there's no wireless charging, so you can forget about all those wireless accessories. I see a lot of companies do make some cases. Y'all see the speaking case video, but they don't have all of the same cases that you could get for your iPhones 
and your Galaxy phone, but a lot of uh, a lot of companies do make accessories. So if you buy this phone, you will be able to find some nice cases. Now, I, I don't know, I forgot how many I did yesterday, but there's, there's a decent amount to choose from. So you will get some accessories. I'm gonna tell you right now, the best case, now out of all the cases I did, the best case to get for this phone is the Spigen Tough Armor, the clear one. This one is gonna have that, it's gonna give it that feel in your hand, it's gonna feel solid, it looks nice. You see I got it on all of my other phones that they make it for, and you get the kickstand. So as far as accessories, you will be able to find some. Next, y'all know, the Floss Factor. What does that mean? That means when you pull out your Pixel XL, and Daquan from the mailroom pulls out his iPhone 7 Plus, all right, my man Calico pulls out his V20, Somebody pulls out the G5. Somebody like me still holding on to the Galaxy Fireball. They pull that out. Your boy got his Nexus 6P rooted and rommed up. Your homegirl got the HCC 10. Somebody got a, you know, Galaxy S7 Edge. Where do you fit in with all of these phones? Where do you fit in on the food chain? Now, this is just my opinion, but I would say you high on the food chain, right? Because first of all, matter of fact, you at the top of the food chain because first of all you got the pixel XL. This is brand new phone You're not gonna see a lot of people with this phone. It's brand new Especially after what happened with the note a lot of people are gonna wait And wait for the second generation, but you got the pixel XL. This is the newest brand new first Google phone So you're already shining just because of that secondly You got the snapdragon 821 so now when you get into the spec wars with the spec boys all right now cancel out Apple, but when you get into the Android spec wars, none of these phones got the 821 except you. And last but not least, you got the last and best version of Android. You got Android Nugget 7.1, not Nougat. All right, Nougat is for y'all pink tight pants wearing cats, real cats, we rocking Android Nugget. But you got the latest and greatest version of Android Nugget 7.1, and you guaranteed to have the latest and greatest version of Android as soon as it hits the market. Now you remember when everybody had Lollipop and you had your Nexus, and then all of a sudden it came out with Marshmallow, and every time you seen somebody with a Lollipop phone, you was like, peasant. You're gonna have that same feeling with the Pixel XL. Because even right now, a lot of people, you know, Calico, rocking with this you know, LG V20, and they rocking Nugget. But when I pull up on the set and I got my Pixel XL, I'm looking at you like peasant. All right, now, yeah, no, I'm just trolling, but you get the idea. This phone is pretty much future-proof. All right, now, they guaranteed, I think, two, what is it, two, either two or three years worth of, matter of fact, it's two years worth of updates and three years worth of security updates. So this is a future-proof phone right here. On a scale of one to 10, this phone is a major win. Like I said, if I had to put it, Matter of fact, I'll give y'all my top five before we get out of here. Let me show you my top five phones. All right, so here's my top five phones in this order. Number one, the Galaxy Fireball. Still holding on. My phone is cool to the touch. I rock this phone all day, every day. This is pound for pound, the best phone with the most features in the world. Number two, iPhone 7 Plus. Now, I like to have the best of both worlds. This is the best Android phone, and this is the best Apple phone. Number three, I'm going with the Moto Z Droid. Now, this is a smooth phone right here, but the best part about it is the Moto Mods. The JBL and the battery charge mod, this is crazy not to mention, it's a smooth beast. Number four, I'm going with the Pixel. Best camera in the game, and the smoothest, fastest version of Android out. And last but not least, I'm going with the LG V20. Now, I just got this phone today, but I'm already feeling it. The DAC on it is ridiculous. I like that secondary always on display. I need that. Got a big giant screen, and the camera is amazing. Dual cameras with pro mode. This is a win right here. Now, number six would be HTC 10, then LG G5. Then we could go down the list. So anyway, I know this is a long video, but I try to cover as much as I can because when you're getting ready to spend that 850 bucks, it's not a game and I don't take it as a game. All right, so hit me up in the comments. If I missed anything, I'll answer them in the comments section. Y'all know how we do. Shout out to everybody that rock with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google Plus. 
Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Foxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time. 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know. Stream gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. No meat boys allowed. Oh yeah. Special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat. Flossy underscore Carter. That's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad. I see y'all in the comment section early. Hashtag salute. Oh yeah. One more thing. I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, close your eyes and picture me rolling. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces. Spock, one to beam up. Energize. Thank you.